Yo, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to have a video for you guys. And today, I'm going to be doing unanswered questions, and I'm going to be covering Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, if you guys don't know that this film is regarded to be one of the popular MCU films in Phase 4, and also considered to be one of my favorite movies, and what's it called? Well, I'm actually going to be uh, doing some unanswered questions to discuss about what stuff were cut out, and also what were the original ideas for the film. So, it's going to... That means so. Here you go. And also for stars, I'm going to be doing five questions. So starting off, we actually got is question number five. And this is actually on what were America Chavez and Venom's role? All right. So in the original, uh, what's it called idea? So America Chavez and and Venom were actually supposed to be in the film. And I guess that was called. We didn't get any confirmation until I guess after the film was released until what's called some concept art was actually revealed like showing us our what's called America Chavez and well in this concept art which actually shows what's called Peter, MJ, and Ned actually meeting America Chavez at an amusement park and then well I guess that the original idea is that I guess that America Chavez was supposed to summon both um, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield's uh, um, Spider-Man into the MCU but instead we actually just had Ned just summon them out of nowhere and then the other console we actually got is actually of America Chavez, I guess, you know, uh, what's it called at the Statue of Liberty, uh, what's called Battle, where we end up seeing Spider-Man fighting against Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. And well, honestly, I guess that what I could tell since America Chavez, uh, what's called role was that she was supposed to summon the two Spider-Mans alongside uh, what's called. We did also got confirmation from the writers saying that Venom's role was that he was supposed to join in the battle to help Tom Holland's Spider-Man and also the other two, uh, what's called... Spider-Man to go and fight against the what's called the villains and honestly well what I could tell it seems that that right there would have been so cool to see but I guess sadly it didn't but alongside like it would have been cool to go and see that but sadly it did not happen and to be honest like I don't know why they did not went with that idea like honestly of Venom joining you know the fight and honestly like it's it'd be pretty cool to see that but like uh, what I could tell it seems that probably they just had a lot of like you know I do so you know but um anyway moving on but jumping to conclusion, I guess that basically what's called that um, Venom was actually not included into the fight. And I guess that Woody did decide just to go and have Venom appear in the post credit scene to live a piece of the symbiote. And then that was it. So yeah, but anyway, moving on. All right, question number four. And this was actually on who was actually the sixth member of the Sinister Six. All right, so you guys already know that in the film, like the only villains that, we, that, that was called that were introduced, which was Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, Alfred Molina's Doc God. Thomas St. Church's Sandman, Race Iffins the Lizard, and El Jamie Foxx's Electro. And well, literally, like in the film, like we only had which was five villains, which was, I guess, uh, what's called that time was actually dubbed the Sinister Five. And honestly, like if you guys know that we were supposed to get a Sinister Six, and honestly, it kind of sucked that we didn't get like the only flaw that it had about this movie is that it didn't really introduce the Sinister Six. Because like, like when they first actually announced the trailer, like I was surprised that like uh, what's called was so excited to go and see some villains returning from the different universes and literally i thought that at that time i thought that oh we were going to be getting a multiverse sinister six but sadly i guess that once when the film released i mean like there was no six member uh what's called revealed it was just the five villains and literally at the end the only villains that were that turned evil which was actually willem defoe's green goblin Thomas Hayden Church as Sandman, Reese Iffins the Lizard, and Jane Fox Electro. Those were the only villains that turned evil, while Alfred Molina's Dr. Ox was, was the only villain that turned good. And honestly, like, I was called, literally at that time, I was kind of like shocked that they actually cured Doc Ock, but instead, like, if they, like, here's the thing, like, literally, if this uh, condo scene would have went differently, like, for example, like, if Peter actually was called try to cure one of the villains, but I don't know where, I guess that probably another villain showed up and I guess that villain could might have been I guess what what's called uh the sixth member of the Sinister Six and I guess the villain uh, what's called that a uh, villain could actually end up freeing uh, what's called Doc Gogs uh you know uh AI control whatever and then what's called the uh the Green Goblin ends up taking over uh, Norman Osborn and then I guess that right there uh, what's called we would have got the whole Sinister Six but only well uh, sadly like we did not get a Sinister Six we just only had five villains but only Four villains turned bad, and Doc Ock was the only good villain. But honestly, like uh, that condo fight scene was actually one of my favorite fight scenes. Hey, at least that like what's called like we only got one scene with the whole villains. But honestly, like like we should we should have gotten more. But moving on to the six members. So originally uh, we had, we did got a uh, uh, moving on to the six members. So we did actually got a what's called concept art showing us I guess Doctor Strange fighting Mysterio, and yeah, basically. 
It was confirmed that Mysterio was supposed to be the sixth member of the Sinister Six, but basically there is actually many theories going on say that like, oh, which version of Mysterio was it? Was it actually the Mysterio from, I guess, you know, uh, what's it called the MCU or, or was it Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio? Because some people were actually debating, say that like, oh, did he survive the end of Far From Home or did he actually die? But what I could tell is since he could have died, but like, really, like what I could tell is since probably this version of Mysterio that was shown in the console or it could have been i guess a variant i mean he could have just came from the multiverse and well what it could tell it seems like he like this version of mysterio could actually was called been a different variant that he could have been played maybe by what's called jake gyllenhaal or he could have just played by the same actor uh I, I was, or he could have been played by a different actor because what it could tell it seems that probably uh what's it called like i don't know if like what were the ideas of bringing mysterio in like uh, probably like i don't know if they actually were planning on bringing back Jake Gyllenhaal as the villain again, or probably they decided going to have another actor play the villain. Since basically this is actually what's called I was called the film of all around where what's called the villains came from the multiverse. So what I could tell seems that this uh, what's called version of Mysterio could actually have been from the multiverse, and I guess that what's called it seems that sadly that uh, what's called uh, sadly we I guess that we did not get a Sinister Six, and sadly we just got a Sinister Five, which was. Hey, I mean, like, at least we actually got a live, almost a live action version of the Sinister Six. But what do you like? Uh, just let you guys know that the figures of the villains are out. Like, for example, the Hot Toys, uh, what's it called figures of Green Goblin, Doc Ock, and Electro are out. But like some other toy companies, they made figures of the Lizard and Sandman. So if you guys want to go and uh, complete your Hot Toy collection of what's it called of the of No Way Home, like, what do you guys suggest you to go ahead and get, you know, like what's called the hot toy spider-man but the integrated suit and then just get the hot toy versions of of the friendly neighborhood spider-man and the amazing spider-man then for the villains well just go ahead and order the green goblin and what's called doc gog and electra and also for the other two and for the other two villains uh for sam and just order him off of what's called another website because i got uh what's called yeah, another uh, what's called a uh, figure website does have the sandman and then alongside with the laser you can just get him in a, in a different uh what's called uh what's called figure website and then after that once when you order those figures like if you uh what's called like if you want to do the sinister five you could just have all the five villains or if you want to do it your own sinister six just order the mysterio figure and you can just throw that in there and then boom you got you get a uh multiverse sinister six and i guess you know that's kind of pretty much it but literally jumping to conclusion i guess that like mysterio was supposed to be the sixth member of the sinister six but that did not happen and then we only had the five villains and the rest was history so yeah but anyway moving on all right, so up next we got is question number three, and this one actually discussed about what would happen if the villains did not return home. All right, but jumping to conclusion is that what happened if the multiverse villains decided to uh, stay in the uh, MCU? Now, basically, uh, this right here will actually become a bit of a problem because here's things. So basically, if you guys know that these villains uh, haven't been introduced into the MCU yet, and basically what uh, was called the the these villains are just you know from different universes, so they're just you know multiverse uh, variants, and well. Basically, this could actually be said in Doctor Strange because, you know, there was called when both Doctor Strange and uh, America Chavez travel to different universes, they meet their, what's called, they meet, you know, some other, uh, what's called, different superheroes that they haven't seen in the MCU yet. But they do actually step upon uh, what's called evil, uh, what's called Sinister Strange. And then, well, basically, uh, what's called, but literally, and what's called, but in No Way Home, basically, they're considered to be multiversal trespassers. And basically, what's it called, and what's called uh, uh what's called in uh what's called in multiversal madness basically uh both doctor strange and america chavez are also considered to be multiversal trespasses because you know their version of wanda took over their version of wanda so yeah basically this could also be said in no way home that they're what's it called multiversal trespassers so that's kind of a bit of a problem and also speaking of that basically tom hardy's venom is also a multiversal trespasser because he just got teleported to the mcu but Ludi, I was called. Um, he never actually joined the fight with you know the other villains, or he hasn't even actually what's called did join the fight because I guess well originally he was supposed to be in the fight, but got uh, but what's called uh, the director got cut, so he decided. But he oh, was called. He just ended up being shown in the post credit scene, and then that was kind of pretty much it. But literally, like uh, what's called like what's called. But jumping to conclusion, I guess that if the multiverse villains decided to stay in the MCU, then that would become a problem. And then, well, if they end up actually was it called encountering their MCU variants, which I don't know if that would become a problem to them. Because basically, well, here's the thing: 
these villains uh, what's called are aware that they're actually from different universe but they're not aware that that they might come across their variants and basically if they do well they'll probably not be that surprised because you know i mean like what's called at the end their variant uh, what's called there from the uh, from the multiverse and then well what's called uh they end up stumbling upon their uh variant version so well, they'll probably end up noticing that but it will actually be cool to see them meet their own mcu uh what's called version say so anyway, moving on question number two all right so this question discussed well why didn't doctor strange or spider-man capture venom all right, so the post credit scene of uh, what's called No Way Home, we're actually introduced back to Tom Hardy's Venom, who's actually at a bar in Mexico, and he ends up referencing what's called both Iron Man and Hulk alongside with Thanos, and then at the end, he ends up what's called mentioning that he wants to go meet Spider-Man, but at the end, he actually ended up getting sent back to his universe due to the spell made by Doctor Strange. But jumping to a conclusion is that why didn't what's it called Doctor Strange or Spider-Man catch your Venom, or why didn't they uh, what's called were aware of him? Now, literally, there could actually be an explanation why that like, they were not aware that Venom was also what's called brought into the MCU. I guess that they probably like agree since uh, what's it called in the spell of uh, what's called during the scene where Peter, uh, what's called where Doctor Strange was making the spell, Peter kept on messing it up. And then he meant, uh, what's called once when uh, Doctor Strange takes control of the spell, he ends up what's called mentioning that Peter actually messed up his spell six times, but Peter says that he messed it up five times. So I guess that what I could tell it seems that Doctor Strange was right because he actually did mess up the spell six times because well uh what's called out of nowhere once when the uh, what what's called once when the spell gets loose he ends up breaking in the multiverse but ends up what's called opening the multiverse which brings in the uh, what's called the multiverse villains which is Green Goblin, Doctor Octopus, Sandman, the Lizard and Electro, and also Venom. And well basically I guess that was called uh, I guess that the reason why that Peter said that like he only uh, what's called messed it up five times because I guess that he lost something but like literally like what uh, what's called but like literally like Doctor Strange uh, what's called said that he messed it up six times so he was actually right right there I mean like uh, what's called because like literally like uh, what's called if Peter said that like if he messed it up five times then why did Venom was brought into the MCU I mean like literally it doesn't make any sense that like he actually provoked the spell five times but like in general I guess that he did it six times and then that's the reason why how did Venom appear in the MCU but Honestly, like, literally, but jumping to cushion is that, like, why were Doctor Strange and Spider-Man aware that, like, Venom was brought into the MCU? Like, literally, I guess that probably that they weren't aware that, like, he was out there. Or, I guess that they thought that the spell only brought in the five villains. And then, I guess they only, what's called, I guess they probably must did, what's called, did not know that Venom was out there. So, I guess they probably missed the villain. But what I could tell is, seems that probably, you know, they were not aware. And then, basically, at the end, you know, Venom was sent back to his universe. So, yeah, but anyway, moving on. And the last one least we got is question number one. And this one discussed about, uh, since like when Doctor Strange made the spell, like do other people remember Peter? All right, so at the end of No Way Home, Doctor Strange ends up making a spell to make Airblade forget Peter Parker. And then once when he ends up finishing uh, what's called making the spell, like the villains alongside with the two Spider-Man end up returning back to their universes. And then, well, Peter says goodbye to Ned and MJ. And then after that, the movie ends where he ends up visiting Ned and MJ, but they forgot who he was. And then after that, well, let's go. He tries to go ahead and remember them. But instead, I guess that he ends up making a decision just to leave them. And then after that, well, What's called the movie ends where Peter ends up making the uh, ends up creating the classic suit, and then after that, that's where the and then after that, that's uh, the movie roughly ends. And, well, and then at that point, after that, what's it called? This year, we got the re release of the No Way Home with new footage added and also alongside with a new ending. And then basically, the new ending ends up seeing what's it called uh, Betty Brandt discuss about uh, what's called the events of Homecoming and No Way Home. But the only difference is that Peter is not shown, and then I guess that right there has something to do with the spell that Doctor Strange created. So I guess that at the end, the spell did work, and I guess that that right there kind of caused a few changes to the events of Homecoming and, and Far From Home, and then I guess also No Way Home as well. So I guess that the only uh, changes that, that were made is that basically, well, during those three films, uh, Spider-Man did, uh, what's called those events happened, but the only thing that did change is that basically nobody remembers who's Peter. So yeah, basically the spell did work, but what's called, but, what's called, but jumping to the question is that do, uh, do other people still remember Peter uh, what's called exist? Now, look at this. Actually, now, what's called? Now, look at this was actually uh, was called theorized and also discussed by a lot of by fans. And basically, they say that like, oh, like what's called? Since basically the spell only actually was called 
erased uh, everybody's memories of what's called about Peter, who was Spider-Man. But literally, I guess that what's called they, uh, what's called. Uh, what's called fans are theorizing say that the spell only worked i guess on earth and i guess it didn't and i guess probably the people uh what's called the the heroes who are outsiders such as captain marvel uh, what's called such as uh what's it called um uh, hulk or actually what's called nick fury actually what's called do i uh, was called remember who peter is and i guess that well goody what i could tell i guess that probably the spell only worked on was called that when he worked on, I guess, on Earth, or maybe only worked on, I guess, how can I say, in uh, New York. And basically, well, what I could tell is seems that probably maybe the spell could actually affect everybody in New York, but outside of New York, well, it probably did not, because I guess that was called the only heroes who right was called of, of New York is actually Hulk, and also um, what's it called, um, Captain Marvel, and also what's called Thor, Gar the Guardians of the Galaxy, and Nick Fury, and well, literally, uh, what's called, I, don't, uh, I don't know what other uh, what's called heroes that are actually outside of New York, but like those are the heroes that I just came up with, so what I could tell is that probably those heroes do remember who Peter is, and I guess that probably the spell was not affected, uh, was, I guess the, they were not affected by the spell, so what I could tell is that probably, yeah, they do remember who Peter is, and I guess that they were affected by spells so like literally in the near future like what's called if peter ends up meeting up with the other heroes and he ends up telling him that if they remember him so i guess what i could tell i guess that yeah they probably end up saying that they do remember who he is and i guess that with the other superheroes which is you know dr strange and what's the con the what's called america Chavez, who just always go show up in multiverse of madness doesn't know I was because she doesn't know who is Spider-Man, basically, you know, like, she, she's just, like, you know, what's called introduced, so she's barely going to get to know Spider-Man alongside with the other heroes, such as, what's it called, She-Hulk, and also, what's called Moon Knight, and uh, Miss Marvel, etc., like, well, those heroes don't know who is, uh, who is Spider-Man, but they don't know that he is, I was called that Peter Spider-Man, because, you know, I mean, like, what's it called, those heroes haven't even actually met him yet, so what I could tell, it seems about the spell only affected everybody who, what's called, who were, who actually know Peter Spider-Man, but they actually was called, but they're actually in New York. And then I guess that the other heroes who were actually outside of New York probably do remember who Peter is. So yeah, basically the spell did not affect them, but only affected the people who were was called New York, and then who were actually uh, who actually were exposed to Peter's identity. And then you know that was kind of you know pretty much it. But who knows? I guess that that will probably get explained later in the next trilogy, or probably it was called in the near future. So yeah, moving on. So you're putting Moon on. And there you have it guys. So that, those are the unanswered questions on Spider-Man No Way Home. Honestly, this is actually one of my favorite films in the trilogy alongside Homecoming and Far From Home. And well, I'm looking forward to going to see the next trilogy and also to see if, if Spider-Man will appear probably in the next Avengers movies or who knows. But looking forward to going and see it. So yeah, but anyway, moving on. Well, there you have it guys. So if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe to channel. Go ahead and subscribe to channel. Hit the notification. I'll see you guys later.